Hello, everyone. Welcome. Thank you for joining us today for the first in National American University's Henley Putnam School of Strategic Security webinar series. And today we're looking at the question, is Santa a national security risk? My name is Nancy Reggio. I'm Director of Marketing here at NAU, and I'm really happy to have you all join us. We do have a number of people expected to join the broadcast, so we're going to wait about one minute, and then we'll get started. Thanks so much. Well, hello. Welcome to the first in NAU's Henley Putnam School Strategic Security Webinar Series. Today we join Dr. Ben Strait, Associate Dean Henley Putnam, and Dr. Jason Piccolo, an industry expert and Henley Putnam alum. And today they're going to look at the question, is Santa a national security risk? You know, NAU, we do offer a lot of different certificate and degree programs, and I encourage you to check us out online, www.national.edu. Before we get going, I do want to remind you of a couple of things. Uh, first of all, your lines are on mute, and we do that to reduce the background noise, but we certainly want you to participate. So as you have questions, if you look in the bottom of your screen, you'll see there's a Q&A section. Please go ahead and load it up with questions, and at the end of the presentation, we'll cover the answers. We we'll look forward to that portion of, as well. Uh, second, you're we are recording all of this, so you'll get a copy of the audio and the video from today's presentation. That way you can have it to review. And with that, I turn it over to Dr. Strait and Dr. Piccolo. Thanks, Nancy. I appreciate it. Well, good afternoon again. I'm Dr. Ben Strait, and I am the Associate Dean of Criminal Justice and Paralegal Studies. And I'm joined again by Dr. Jason Piccolo, a graduate of the Doctor in Strategic Security program here at Henley Putnam School of Strategic Security. So, Dr. Piccolo, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Okay, so Dr. Piccolo is a former special agent and supervisor with the Department of Homeland Security. He patrolled trafficking corridors as a U.S. Border Patrol agent near the San Diego and Mexico border and went on to secure an assignment with the prestigious White House Security Council's Human Smuggling Cell. He is the published author of Unwavering, A Border Agent's Journey, a firsthand account of the real-life border wars surrounding narcotics trafficking, human trafficking, and human smuggling and undercover operations. He also dedicates his time volunteering with veteran organizations. Dr. Piccolo's second book was recently published and it's titled Out of the Shadows and is a government whistleblower's firsthand account of how the protection of migrant children became a political firestorm. And we'll discuss that towards the end of the webinar today. But first and foremost, we are discussing <coughs> Santa as a threat to national security. Okay, so what do we know about Santa Claus? So you compile the list throughout the year to determine who was naughty or nice. We also know that his elves who live and work in Santa's North Pole compound labor to create toys for the good little boys and girls. These elves create toys for over half a billion children. They are not paid. Number three, Santa uses a magical sleigh to deliver the toys on Christmas Eve. And finally, Santa lands his sleigh on the roof of the house where toys are to be delivered, gains entry either through chimney or another means, and delivers the toys without detection. So, is Santa Claus a threat to national security? This has to be evaluated, and the Henley Putnam School of Strategic Security coursework for the doctorate in strategic security provides a great foundation for this evaluation. We will use the content from four doctoral courses to evaluate the potential threat. And again, we are fortunate to have Dr. Jason Piccolo, who is a graduate of this program and has taken these courses. So in the course SEC 750, the strategic security community, students study the interactions of the main intelligence, counterterrorism, and protection agencies of the United States. Dr. Piccolo, you took this course and from professional experience, what agencies might be tasked with evaluating if Santa Claus is a threat to national security and what would be their specific roles? Well, what they would do first is they would vet him through the National Targeting Center, which is part of the Department of Homeland Security's Customs and Border Protection. And it's right here, right outside of DC where I'm at. And what they do is they use an automated, automated targeting um, system and they would send, uh, they would vet Santa Claus through every federal agency you could possibly imagine. 
from Homeland Security to U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services to the DEA to the U.S. Marshals, in fact. And, and that's what the first thing would, they would do is they would, they would vet Santa Claus. So it would be interesting to see what comes out of that vetting process. Yeah, exactly. They, they probably have to do third agency checks with uh, the five eyes, i.e. everybody all across the world that we're partners with as well. Sounds like quite a task. And in the course Pro 700 Protection and Operations Management, students study the planning and conduct of protection operations at the senior management level. Students explore the preparation, planning, personnel selection, and conduct of both short and long-term protection operations, both domestic and overseas. Dr. Piccolo, you took this course and along with your professional experience, what would you recommend to be the national security plan to protect our borders against Santa's entrance and the plan to protect national airspaces should he breach them? Well, it turns out that Santa Claus has a special immigrant visa, so he can come and go as he pleases. And he's also considered a diplomat. So what happens is the Department of State has an excellent uh, crew of what they call diplomatic security special agents who are going to pr provide executive protection for their dignitary, in this case, Santa Claus. So they're going to do advances. They're going to do uh, security checks for every location he goes to. They're even going to provide a mobile security detachment to go with him as he travels across our country, across the country. So that's interesting. Is there, is there in real life, is there a special lifetime visa that can be granted? <laughs> Not that I know of, but for Santa Claus, I'm sure there is. Yeah, I was going to say they could uh, create one and call it the Santa Claus visa. And he's the only uh, one that has it. <laughs> it's an SV uh, special clause. Yeah, it's very cool. In the course INT 700, the Strategic Intelligence Process and Policy, students are prepared to manage and coordinate large-scale intelligence collection and analysis operations involving a variety of intelligence types. Dr. Piccolo, you took this course and along with your professional experience, could you tell us the various intelligence agencies that might be involved in investigating how the elves wound up at the North Pole compound? You know that the North Pole is in Alaska, sorry, so the U.S. has jurisdiction, and it is likely that all the elves did not originate in Alaska. Sure, the immigrants, they're actually um, allowed to have a special employment immigrant visa because they are special. They have, they're the only ones that actually build and create these awesome toys on behalf of Santa Claus. Now, you did mention they're not paid, but they're paid in other ways with food and cookies and everything else and love by Santa and his, and his crew. But yes, that they're going to be vetted to ensure that their visas are up to date and to ensure specifically that traffickers aren't using them for illicit means. So the U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Service will vet them, which is part of the Homeland Security, uh, Department of Homeland Security, to ensure that they are not being harmed or used as victims of trafficking. Hmm. Well, okay, I'll come back to that point in a moment. Let me just move forward with our last course here. In INT 800 Intelligence Practicum, students learn about the sources of intelligence information, and they also learn how analysts use this information in the analysis process. Dr. Piccolo, you took this course and along with your professional experience, could you tell us the methods by which Santa Claus collects the intelligence to determine which children are naughty and which are nice? Well, the children fall under the juvenile status. So getting to the records is it's slim to none, but a lot of children nowadays have open source information available either through themselves or through their parents. So Santa has a vast network of OSINT, open source intelligence analysts who verify whether children have been naughty or nice. But not only do that, he also has a group of human intelligence gatherers, human throughout the country who are verifying whether children are naughty or nice. Hmm. And I would bet a lot of information would be determined by checking the children's social media networks and what they post. Got to watch what you're putting out there, kids. <laughs> so overall, do you think Santa Claus is a threat to national security? No, absolutely not. Yeah, I don't, I mean, there's no way. It's, there's, there's no human trafficking and no threat detected because the elves originated through various countries and applied for special employment based immigrant visas. And as you said, Santa Claus was granted a special lifetime visa and can travel to and from the U.S. at will. And I'll tell you, Santa must have, uh, a very powerful lobby on K Street to get special visas written for him to get <laughs> absolutely get various uh, you know 
terrifying work-based visas for the elves. So, well, whatever. Uh, I'm glad he's not a threat. And now we can all sleep better at night, having thoroughly flushed that out through doctoral course and from someone who took the course and is a professional in the field, uh, the analysis of no threat. But human trafficking is real. And Dr. Piccolo recently published his second book, Out of the Shadows, a government whistleblower's firsthand account of how the protection of migrant children became a political firestorm. And what can you tell us about this book? This book is, I'd like to call it a nonfiction novella. It's a smaller book than, it's only 80 pages. But what I wanted to do is I wanted to provide a snapshot of how children are being used at the border. Now, I hate to have to go into a serious topic after we talked about Santa Claus, but it is a serious topic. Now, a lot of people don't realize that uh, children are being trafficked, smuggled, and used over and over again by these illicit trafficking organizations that are based within and outside our country. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to provide a snapshot of how these traffickers are using children and then also bring up some current knowledge of how this has been going on since at least 2011, 2012 up to the present. So this isn't, so your, your book, you're capturing a very recent snapshot in time. Yes, that's exactly what I wanted to do is I wanted to make a short book. Uh, and that's why it's considered a nonfiction novella, just so it brings up to date what's going on at the border and why children are being um, not detained, but separated from the adults that are carrying them across the border. Because you have to vet those adults to ensure that they're the actual familial relation to that child. Yeah. And when, when was your book published? Uh, I was published about uh, three weeks ago now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cause I know it's I a soft a... launch right now because I'm not going to do the full, full blown media until January. Yeah. I have the book and I put it on my wish list for, you know, family and friends and they're going to get it for me. But the reason why I want to read this is because all we see in the media, we see different accounts of what's going on. We know the mm -hmm. media is sensationalist and I want to go to a source. I want to go to someone I want to read firsthand accounts and information from someone who's looking at this objectively and analytically and not from a subjective or sensationalist standpoint, point of view. And that's, that's why I'm really looking forward to reading the book and maybe we'll have to podcast about that next month or so. We'll see. But, um, oh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I'd let, I'd, I'll send a, a bunch of copies out there for the students as well. Oh yeah, that'd be, that'd be good. I'd, I'd like to incorporate this into a class or two potentially, mm -hmm. but we'll see about that. Um, where is this book available at? It's available at Amazon, Barnes and Noble, and uh, pretty much anywhere online you can buy books. Okay. So you have to go to a special website and do a secret handshake or anything? No, no secret handshakes. Okay. I can just go to Amazon and find it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Great. Okay. Well, uh, Nancy, do you, did anybody type in any questions or can we move to the question and answer section? Now, we do have a couple of questions, and um, I uh, let's jump right into them. And I want to remind people, please go ahead. If you have additional questions, just go ahead and put them in that Q&A right on the screen, and we'll answer them live. A um, couple of questions for um, both for Dr. Piccolo. One was, uh, can you tell us more about the volunteer time with the veterans organizations? You know, what do you do, and, and with whom are you working? And Oh, sure. I am. Um, that's one thing I'm very passionate about. Uh, I was a former U.S. Army captain. I did a tour in Iraq in 0506. I was an enlisted member in the military in the 1990s as well. And one thing I'd like to do passionately is I work with a group called Hire Heroes USA. And what I do is I help veterans gain employment in the federal government and law enforcement field specifically. So I'll help them with their resumes, interview prep, um, et cetera. The other organization I just started this year with was Hill Vets. Um, Hill Vets is a group of spouses, uh, Gold Star widows, veterans, current serving members of the military who get together. And what we want to do is affect policy change. And uh, specifically what I do is I, I work in a communication and journalism area where I try to shine light on uh, current veteran issues, i.e. veteran suicide, veterans in the media. It doesn't necessarily have to be um, the 22 a day type um, talk, but it is just trying to shine a positive light on our veteran community. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. For that. <laughs> um, so uh, 
one more question really specific for you, and then there's a couple more questions uh, coming through. Um, how would you say that your doctorate in strategic security from Henley Putnam School of Strategic Security has benefited your career? Oh, I, I, I don't even know where to start with that. For one thing, analytical writing was a huge aspect compared to my master's degree, which is in forensic science, coming and actually writing about topics I'm passionate about, which are terrorism, counterterrorism, uh, the Homeland Security, et cetera. It really helps a lot. Um, it's given me credibility in industry as well. Um, every time I do a, a media appearance or a speaking engagement or anything, I do also, you know, touch on the fact that I, you know, I, I do have my doctorate from a prestigious university. Fantastic. Thank you. Um, so a couple of one uh, question here. Uh, so on behalf of all your factual statements, yeah, can you confirm that Santa isn't a terrorist? I can absolutely confirm. I uh, don't tell my kids, but I actually talked to Santa and, you know, we did a little human interrogation interview tactics with him and he turned out to be straight arrow. There you go. Great. <laughs> and uh, a question uh, about publishing, actually. Can you explain any challenges that you faced trying to get your book published? You know, the first book I was published through a, a regular author house and my second edition, I published myself and this book I actually published through my company. Um, there are different aspects of publishing that are frustrating, but there's also a lot of positives. Now, that's one thing about, I wanted to get this information out super quick. That's why it's a nonfiction novella. Mm -hmm. My next book is going to be about human trafficking in which I'll be going through a traditional publishing house with that. If you follow me on social media, um, at Dr. Jason Piccolo on Twitter and at official Jason Piccolo on Facebook, I will, and go to my website, jasonpiccolo.us. I'll be um, really diving deep into the publishing process. And that's for the whole community because everybody I talk to, or not everybody, but I'd say 90% of the people I talk to has a book inside them and they want to get it out, whether it's fiction or nonfiction. So just follow me uh, over the next few months with some of my author friends. We're going to be going into the, the publishing process, especially if you want to get your, your knowledge out there. Great. And um, will your contact information be included with the slides? And the, so I believe the answer is yes. We'll tell people how to find you. <laughs> yes. Um, uh, <laughs> and uh, another question, uh, do you only publish books or do you have advice about publishing in journals such as the Journal of Strategic Security at Henley Putnam? I will be publishing there eventually. Um, sure. But I do write a lot of op-eds for Washington Examiner, Law Enforcement Today, uh, National Review. So I do a lot of op-eds, and I try to maintain my current, uh, my current knowledge on all aspects of Homeland Security. Just like, you know, as a, if someone's going to say they're an expert in the field, you have to stay current. So that's one thing I do is I do write a lot of op-eds. It's also important to note that if you're going to publish to any journal, but the Journal of Strategic Security, Every journal has their own guidelines for submission publication where you submit it. And so I would thoroughly review the website and the journal itself and mm -hmm. the requirements before making a submission. So you submit it the first time so it can be correctly evaluated based on its content and not on format mm -hmm. or missing content or whatnot. So, Yeah, I would definitely caution anybody who wants to, to publish through, if they really have their dream set on getting publish, published through the security journal or through any paper to do it right the first time and do go find the guidelines. Fantastic. <laughs> um, that ends all the questions we have. So I don't know, do you have um, any other statements or comments you would like to make either of you? No, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate this. And please follow me on social media. If you have any further questions, just hit me up. I'll gladly answer them. Yeah, I really appreciate, again, uh, Dr. Piccolo, you coming and doing another podcast with me, but this is a webinar, and I appreciate all those who showed up and asked questions and uh, gave us a chance to finally determine if Santa is a threat to national security, and he's not, nor is he a terrorist. <laughs> Fantastic. And for those of you, I see we're getting some additional questions. Um, you're welcome to continue to send this through, and I will go ahead and send them to Dr. Strait and uh, Dr. Piccolo, and we will get some answers out to you. 
as long as, uh, and I'll include their contact information as well. So thank you very much everyone for joining the webinar. And look for both the slides, which will be headed your way soon, and information on the next Henley Putnam School Strategic Security webinar, which we hope to uh, offer in late January. Again, thanks for attending. <laughs>